what do you think are the biggest areas of unmet HIV medical therapy needs? Glad to start with that one, John. Um, so, you know, at, at Gilead, we have uh, three areas uh, of high interest uh, in the area of HIV. Uh, one is prevention, of course. Uh, one is uh, cure that we just talked about. The other one is treatment. But what we're really excited about now is the next frontier, which is a long-acting antiretroviral treatment. So today, you know, many people use a single tablet regimen, one pill once a day to control their HIV. But the really exciting opportunity that lies ahead is potentially a treatment that could be given likely by injection once or twice a year that could basically contain the virus in their bodies. And so that's a very exciting development for us. We have a, a capsid inhibitor, uh, lenicapavir, that we're studying in that regard that is clinical testing right now. So we're very exciting, excited about that, that prospect and combinations of agents with lenicapavir. Maybe I'll just um, add on to that as well. I think um, you know, that this field has come so far with, uh, with HIV treatment and very well-tolerated single tablet regimens, and now we're um, kind of on, on, the, on the, the uh, edge of finding a longer-acting treatment, and prevention has also made um, remarkable progress. Um, and I think, you know, the, the big picture of this is that providing as many options as possible for people living with HIV for treatment and prevention and maybe eventually remission um, is really the ultimate goal. And as we push these scientific frontiers, um, I think it's also really important to uh, prioritize the uh, addressing the disparities that we also see in accessing care um, in certain communities that are disproportionately affected um, with this virus and of course uh, the new one as well. Very good. And overall, how would you characterize the state of HIV cure research? Well, I'm glad to start with that question, John. So I think it's a very exciting time. I mean, as I said, we have spent over a decade already researching strategies to, to basically eradicate the reservoir or create a state of viral remission. And uh, I think we made some really nice progress with what we just discussed here today, the combination of a total seven agonist with antibodies to, to the surface envelope of HIV or total seven agonists like vesitolimod with uh, therapeutic vaccination. So it's, it's very exciting that we have this possibility. Now, what's really exciting is potentially the triple combination of a therapeutic vaccine, an antibody to the envelope, and TOL7 agonist. And we just basically had one, our collaborator, Dan Baru, uh, present this work at the recent CROI conference. Again, it was a monkey study combining all three of those modalities and, and showing, again, a very nice efficacy in, in the animal model. So, so I think there's a really nice opportunity to translate these concepts right now. And, and, and many others in the field are, are kind of following our lead here. They, they do like the idea of combining an immune modulatory agent. Uh, others that are being tested in the field are TLR9 agonists, similar type of strategies with antibodies and vaccination uh, and so forth. So we're very excited that I think we have some really good scientific ideas. Now, we're obviously, we're crossing our fingers and hope that this translates to the clinic and shows some efficacy. And lastly, with the state of affairs today with the COVID-19 pandemic, we're having to do conferences virtually. Can you talk about some of the benefits and challenges associated with doing it this way? Sure, I can, uh, I can start. So um, I think, you know, we all um, acknowledge that um, it's, you know, quite disappointing that we were not able to convene here in the Bay Area for AIDS 2020. Um, but that being said, um, a tremendous amount of work and effort went into making this virtual conference as interactive and um, engaging as possible. I think uh, the organizers have done an outstanding job of that. Um, and uh, I, I think that this is um, just another reminder of how close the, the HIV research activists and um, uh, people living with HIV, how close, closely knit those communities really are. And, uh, and I think we all hope to be able to return to in-person conferences when it's safe. Um, and we will continue to uh, pursue pursue these battles in the meantime. And maybe just to add to what Davey said, I, I completely agree. Um, so one of the great benefits of these conferences is the side discussion, right? The discussions that you're having with your colleagues spontaneously, a lot of great brainstorming happens on those side discussions. And obviously that, that's being lost by, by not having a conference live. The other thing for me personally, I, I've been working on HIV for over three decades now 
So I have many colleagues that I've known for, for long periods of time. These colleagues are a lot, uh, are my friends as well. So I really miss seeing them. So, so this is one of, a, a big loss for me personally. Absolutely. I think you make some really good points. It's just this idea of being able to see colleagues, medical peers, and not being able to see them right now makes it tough. And, you know, being able to engage in good discussions. So some really good points that you make there. Thank you both for taking the time to discuss this important research that you're working on. Thank you very much for the opportunity, John. Hope to speak to you again next Thank year. Thank you, John. Thank you.